Well, good afternoon, Flagstaff. Welcome to the Flagstaff Career Exploration Series. And uh, my name is Paul Kopinski, and I'm your host for the series uh, of local professionals who are able to share some professional tips and advice about how they got on their career path uh, for you as middle and high school students in the Flagstaff area. And during the course of the time that we're gonna be with our guests, you're gonna be able to answer or ask questions uh, and you can type them into the chat box, whether you're, that you're on Facebook or YouTube. You can use the comments section and we'll be able to see your comments and I'll be able to forward uh, those comments to our guest. Now, today's guest is Callie Gableman and she is the project manager for Kinney Construction Services. And let's bring Callie into the conversation. Good afternoon, Callie. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Paul. And, uh, Thanks for having you know, it's me. So, it's so fascinating to be able to talk to local professionals who are in industries um, that uh, are available in Flagstaff and available to students who might be thinking about a career path in them and to be able to, to leverage um, your experience to be able to share with uh, students who might be interested or even have, an, have a wondering, what would it be like? to go down a career path into a construction trade. So that's, that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. And Callie, you're a project manager with Kinney Construction that's a local, uh, locally based construction firm, but actually has projects nationwide and internationally too, is that right? Nationwide at this point, yes. But yeah, we have a satellite office in Phoenix, so as but a the main manager, hub is up in Flagstaff. Um, what what are the responsibilities that go with uh, with that role? Um, the the main responsibilities of my job are um, do everything from uh, reviewing the plans when they first come out, um, and sometimes depending on what the contract is like, uh, we coordinate with the the design team to help the design along and help you know kind of facilitate that process and lend our knowledge um, and then once we get into the project phase um, i oversee the issues that come up in the project uh, the coordination of uh, the the systems inside the building and how that fits together in the ceiling space for example um, I do the submittal review, so review all the products that are going to be installed on the on the building, and also manage the cost uh, and the schedule. So budget and schedule, and you know handle the the relationship with the owner. And then there's a superintendent who is in the field, and they run the field work, you know, and are kind of that day to day boots on the ground, so to speak. Uh, role also managing issues as they come up the schedule of course you know so we work together on a lot of things but so there's yeah um, that's the main main event you know there's a lot of things going on in what you're managing i mean you're talking about juggling i mean you've got like 35 <laughs> yeah. things going on in there right so when you think yes. about the skill sets that you're using <laughs> on a, on an ongoing basis what uh, wh how would you define you know what are the skills that you're using um to 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 have this, uh, the ability to manage all of these things? That's a great question. Um, you know, construction is such a diverse uh, career path. It has everything from dealing with numbers, you know, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, organization, you know, organizing a budget, what it takes to keep that going. Um, so it has that side of it. Uh, it has a lot of writing. Um, so you write contracts, uh, and quite often you write, you know, formally in a, like a contractual way. So, uh, there's that type of skill there. Um, and then the other one is aside from just managing all the pieces, you know, you got to be good at kind of zooming out and taking the big higher picture level and then going back in, you know, and, and attacking the items that are, uh, that are on your plate, you know, for that day and then zooming back out, you know, and seeing, okay. So that, that type of, um, perspective shift and your ability to do that, uh, is a really good skill that has helped me a lot. Um, and the other one is the main one is problem solving. 
uh, being able to, to think critically about things and see all the different angles um, and put that all together to come up with the best solution uh, for the project at that time. But yeah, lots of um, problem solving <laughs> wasn't one of those things that you studied in school, right? I mean, okay. I was pretty into math. <laughs> yeah, I really liked math, especially algebra. Um, and yeah, that kind of set me off on my so path. Can you say actually, more about that interest in math and how you recognized that early on that that was something that you a you were interested in, and then what was the process that you uh, went through to identify what are the what are the ways in which I can use this interest in math? Um, so yeah, I I honestly just I really liked doing the multiplication table math sheets. You know, we'd be timed, and that was kind of fun. So I, I really liked that. Uh, I liked, I like things that make sense. You know, you can take like an algebraic equation and if you follow a process, you can come out with a solution that, you know, uh, most of the time is correct. And construction in a way is like that. You know, you have all these different pieces and you'll follow a process to, to get to an end result. Um, so that my brain works well in that. Uh, in that way. And um, I like technical things, you know, and construction is very, very technical. Um, I originally wanted to be an architect and discovered that I really like the hands-on, you know, field approach there. So, so then so yeah, when you put the two decided together. that this is something you were going to explore, what were some of the educational choices that you had to make along the way? Um, that that helped to narrow where you really wanted to um, how you really wanted to work. Were there were there some uh, choices that you made educationally? What was the, what what would be a pathway for someone who might be interested in doing this? What 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 are some of the typical things? Um. Well, it's a very fast paced environment, you know, and there are certain personalities that are. Uh, you know, fit very well for this type of career path. One of those is if you're somebody who likes a lot of energy, you know, that like um, kind of fast paced environment where you're thinking on your feet all the time and having to be professional. And, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of stuff coming at you in the construction industry from all different angles. So, um, so I guess those characteristics, you know, kind of looking inside yourself and saying, all right, well, what is my personality like? You know, am I, am I really laid back or, you know, uh, you know, do I move at a, maybe a different pace than that? So that's kind of, that's a little bit where I started. So that, you know, fit nicely for me. Um, and then also college is a great one. Uh, <laughs> you know, they're, there are things about writing skills and math skills and even everything from geology to physics to uh, mean system, electrical systems, you know, all of those things, you really need schooling for that. Um, so I would say, you know, planning on going to college is a good, you know, start uh, for that path. And and yeah, I mean, if you kind of like the science and the technical aspect of things, math, you know, even art too, you know, uh, all those things kind of combined, that might be a good, a good place to start, you know, based on your interests. Again, okay. it sounds to me like there are so many ways that someone could enter into the construction field because you've identified the fact there are so many Definitely. things that are going on, even, even the ones that you're interacting with, uh, the individuals that you're interacting with. So what are some of the other jobs or career paths that a student might um, be interested in exploring? Um. Yeah, just to touch back on that last one, you know, a main part of this job is dealing with people. So if you're a pe people person and like to be around a lot of people and all of that, um, as a project manager, you know, or even project engineer, that would be one thing also, uh, you know, tie into the career path, path piece. Um, 
And then some other jobs in construction. I mean, gosh, there are so many, you know, there's everything from, uh, you know, sweeping hallways, uh, being a subcontractor, or a, actually we like to refer to them as trade partners. Um, being hired on with a trade partner in every trade. I mean, the scope is so broad, you know, you could be on a cleaning crew, you could be an electrician or a plumber or, uh, you know, a flooring installer or work with concrete or, you know, frame the structural steel portion of the building. Um, so there's that. And then, you know, equipment operators, um, that's a very good skill to have, uh, and another career path that could be chosen. There's also, you know, I do more of the office side part, portion of it and super, the superintendent is the person in the field doing the day-to-day -day, uh, things, you know, really on that, those boots on the ground, you know, every day working with the subs, doing the safety meetings. Um, we're, we're live streaming on Facebook and YouTube, and our guest today is Callie Gableman. She is the project manager for Kinney Construction Services. And thanks to Aaron, who, who chimed in with a comment, great info for students for you, Callie. That's wonderful information to hear. And if you have a question about um, the construction trade or something that you think Callie might be able to answer for you if you're interested in exploring this path, type into the comments section, uh, whether on Facebook or YouTube, and we'll uh, forward those questions to Callie so that uh, she can answer your questions uh, in real time. And I understand that there is a, a bit of a delay in, um, in, in the feed, uh, but uh, bear with us on the technical side of things, and, um, and we'll uh, hopefully get you some good information. So Callie, I've got, I've got a question for you. The construction industry is traditionally and maybe stereotypically male dominated. Um, what, um, what, what has been your experience as a woman going into the construction trade that really um, created resistance for you that you might've had to overcome from time to time? Can you speak to students about that? Sure. Um, well, yes, you know, uh, historically it has been a male dominated, um, industry and, you know, some time ago there were very few women in construction and, um, there was kind of this attitude in the field of, you know, you either do it this way or get off the job site, you know, things were like a little more abrasive in the past. Um, and through the natural evolution of things, uh, the industry is changing, I think. Um, you know, superintendents who were managing work before in the past have uh, had to, you know, change their approach to working with people. Things have some uh, in that respect. And, and, you know, I've been in situations where it, you know, it feels like maybe you wouldn't be given the time of day as, you know, somebody else would. And um, in those situations, honestly, I've just had to conjure my courage or gather my courage and just get in there you know, and, uh, you know, just start speaking my mind, you know, what my concerns about the project are or what, what I'm seeing and, um, and just kind of move into that, you know, no matter how uncomfortable it may be at times. Um, and honestly, I've had, I've had pretty good success and, uh, response from people. I, I'm very respected on the job site because I maintain a level of integrity. And when you maintain that level of integrity within yourself, that really cannot be penetrated by anybody else. That's an important point so. to make because as you stay, stay um, clear and true in what your desire is and why you are doing what you're doing, it becomes more difficult for someone to want to maybe mm -hmm. uh, bully you or, or push you, push you over. W would that be a fair way to say it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's hard for somebody, you know, to bully around integrity when, you know, yeah. 
So <laughs> you also talked about the fact so, yeah. that there are changes in the way people, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the people in the industry even ha- are treating each other, that there's an evolution of, of some of those soft skills where there's, there's, um, there's that, that dynamic of, of respect and in um, um, finding ways to um, relate differently, that it's, that it's because there's diversification of mm-hmm. the, pe- the, empl- the employees and people who are coming into the industry and the trades that there's a require that there's a shift in mm-hmm. in the attitude and the skills and the the um, the behavior of people who've been in the industry. So, what are some of those soft skills that you've you've alluded to some, but but how have you helped to start to to shift sure. some of the attitudes that might have been encrusted from some of those people who've been in the the industry a long time that you've been able to maybe uh, get them to to think yeah. a little bit differently. <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Uh, well, how people react to safety on a job site is a great example of this. Um, you know, wearing a hard hat, a vest, and glasses is a pain in the butt when you're trying to work, and nobody wants to do it, right? And when uh, OSHA first came out and they started, you know, making people wear safety gear, it was kind of like, you got to do this. You know, you just kind of ram the information down someone's throat and it just becomes a, becomes a nuisance and a pain. And the way I kind of create safety culture on the job site is I actually let the, the trade partners know that, you know, I actually walk up to the workers in the field and I say, hey, I need you to keep your hard hat on because I care about you going home at the end of the day. It's not just do it, <laughs> right? Like we're bringing in that, that piece of relationship to it that, you know, I actually care about this person, you know, and I, um, and I want to see them safe, you know, so they can go home to their families um, or whatever. And, and that goes across the board, you know, I, I believe in relating to people that way. So I treat people um, with respect and, you know, empower the, our, the people we work with, um, empower the subcontractors to get creative on the job and actually take ownership of their work. You know, they're, they're building something that, you know, people are going to appreciate when it's all done. And that means something, you know, and when people feel like they mean something that they, that their life has purpose, uh, it really changes everything, you know, so you can work through any problem. If the person on the, you know, the person across from you feels like you appreciate them and that they matter in the world. Yeah. It changes everything. So you mentioned the idea of safety. Mm-hmm. And of course, right now, everyone's home isolating because of uh, COVID-19 and, and the concerns about uh, spreading the virus. But your folks are still out on the job site to, to keep the work going because you're still your people are still working, right? So what are some of the issues that you're having to deal with to ensure that yes. your crews are staying safe um, in in not spreading the virus? Yeah, great question. Yeah, great question uh, for these times here. So, you know, we have a big board uh, right when you enter the job site and it has a series of questions. You know, have you come in contact with anyone who has COVID? You know, those types of things. So we're, uh, you know, talking to the subs or the, the workers on site, talking to them constantly um, you know, to, if there's anything glaring, you know, that they've come in contact with someone, uh, we can kind of mitigate it that way. We also made masks a requirement on our job site. So, and that's a task with, uh, staying up on that, (laughs) um, you know, trying to teach someone who wires receptacles all day how to sew a face mask <laughs> is not the easiest thing, but um, there people are starting to get the importance of it. So there's that. We practice social social distancing on the job site and um, follow the recommendations with the CDC. And 
you know, even uh, the people at the head of KCS, you know, Tim and Mike and Gabe, they meet daily and discuss the, you know, new things coming out about COVID just to make sure that uh, everyone is staying safe on the job site. And, um, and yeah, so we do what we can and keep doing the work too. I mean, the people, people want to work, you know, they want to keep working. Um, a lot of these folks out there, it's their livelihood, you know, well, it's so good that you're still able to keep um, people employed mm -hmm. and keep um, production going. So we're talking to Callie Gableman. She's project manager with Kinney Construction Services here in Flagstaff. And we're taking your questions. If you have a question about anything in the construction industry that Callie might be able to answer or something specific to her job as a project manager, type it, type it into, your, into the comments section. We're live streaming on Facebook and YouTube today. So and here's a question from Mary on YouTube. What's the coolest thing about your job? The coolest thing. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see here. Well, there are probably two. Oh, can I say two? Yeah. Um, can I say two? Okay. Uh, so the first one, kind of the more obvious one, um, but it's so great to work on a project and see the result. You know, like actually see the three-dimensional thing that is there that everyone works so hard to... Uh, to put together. So that's awesome. You know, just the physical part of it. Um, you get, you know, direct gratification from visualizing, you know, a building after you build it. Um, and the other one is working with all the different, uh, you know, ethnicities of people, um, people from, you know, all the different, uh, economic classes. I really, I love that, that I'm in the mix of, you know, um, people's struggle and people's success. Um, and, you know, yeah, I guess the connection with all the people. Well, and as you it's said, cool. there are a lot of people that you're interacting with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and the, the, the variety yes. um, is, is just amazing to me. Um, so y you talked about the superintendent mm -hmm. and your job in terms of some of the, uh, the differences. But one of the things I heard you say was that the superintendent is really on site. So how much time are you actually spending on site versus doing other tasks that um, are off site? Um, well, before the building is enclosed, and that means putting in the windows, uh, all the the exterior facade, which could be, you know, the brick on the outside, the metal panels on the outside, the glass, um, until the building is enclosed, things are pretty critical. You know, you have big structural steel being installed, uh, roofing, things like that. So up until that point, I'll be on site, you know, potentially five days a week. Um, and for two people, depending on the project side, size, uh, you know, me and the superintendent could be just slammed all day, every day with questions, you know, props, things like that. And then after that, uh, you know, I kind of trail off a little bit. Like right now, you know, I'm working from home and I go to the job site one day a week for the owner, architect and contractor meeting. So then what would you say then the, the responsibilities of the superintendent are um, that, that are different from your role? Um, the superintendent is really, really coordinating the work uh, to that, you know, finite amount to saying, all right, you're going to be done hanging the drywall in this room, then you're going to the next room. And then after that, the painters are going to come in and they're going to start painting. You know, that's, that's the person who's on site really, really getting to those schedule details like that. Um, and also, well, yeah, that's one of the, one of the differences there. Um, the, the site logistics. So, you know, where material is being staged on the job site is very important. Uh, large pieces of equipment, you know, if you need a crane on the job site, the superintendent would coordinate 
uh, the arrival of the crane, the placement, making sure you have a lift plan so that you know you have the right size crane uh, for the material it's lifting, um, and then you know how the building's going to be blocked off while you're lifting heavy pieces of steel onto it, and where other subcontractors can work while that work is going on, and then all the day-to-day -day safety. You know, the superintendent is really, really in the details of that. So if thinking well. about a student that is watching, um, what advice would you give, say, someone in eighth grade or 10th grade when they're thinking about um, the opportunity to go into the, 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 the industry? Is there a piece of, of advice or two that you might um, give them or something that you would do, um, you would do it in their shoes knowing what you know today? Um, just keep moving forward with that passion for learning, because if you don't like to learn, <laughs> it's not going to be a fun career path. I learn something new every day, you know, and uh, so, yeah, I would just say, you know, sink into to the process of learning and um, and there's that. And then also just being flexible, you know, uh, being able to adapt like to any situation, you know, just like your, your, your own career path. You know, if something comes up that really sparks your interest, maybe you want to be a meteorologist and you don't want to do construction anymore, you know? Um, so there's that piece of it and there's the follow through, you know, like if you do choose to do something, then, you know, see where it leads, take it to the end. And awesome. yeah, it's great, great advice. And Patty on Facebook says, thanks for the great yeah. info. So <laughs> uh, some really good information uh, for everyone out there. Thank you, Callie. Um, so Callie Gableman, project manager from Kinney Construction thanks, Services here in Flagstaff. Um, if you uh, want to get in touch or have some follow-up information, if you're watching this on replay, just type in some comments at the bottom and uh, we'll, we'll get a response to you at, at some point um, in the future. So thanks again, Callie. Have a great afternoon. I know you're going to have to get back to work, but uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Thank you. So I'm Paul Kulpinski. Um, join us next Thursday at three o'clock. We're going to have Maisie Altours, who is the forensic investigator with Coconino County Medical Examiner's Office. We'll be live streaming again right here next Thursday at 3 p.m. And we hope to see you then. Uh, in the meantime, have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining us.